are in the Amazon rainforest. We're on the northeastern coast of South America, right on the equator. It's hot, it's humid, uh, there aren't too many mosquitoes at the moment. <laughs> We've had the last weather check and uh, the weather's been quite beautiful for the last few days, hasn't it? Yes, Katie, today it's a nice sunny day. Uh, a few clouds passed by this morning, uh, nothing nasty. I think that other, other nature is with us today, not the launch. But indeed, we need to remember that the weather changes quickly here in French Guiana. Uh, you know, right now we are at the beginning of the rainy season, but we have not seen much rain. And can rain stop at all? Not at all. Rain is not an issue. But we do need to monitor other things, uh, which is the strength and direction of the high altitude winds, uh, convective clouds and thunderstorms, in order to avoid any risk from lightning, since the launcher goes so fast through the clouds after takeoff. But tonight, no issue. The weather is green and uh, everything is ready to go. And Ariane 5 is a big, strong, reliable beast of a workhorse. She's divided into three main stages, these solid rocket boosters, 31.6 kilometers high and weighing roughly the equivalent of 10 big lines. The EPC, the main cryogenic uh, stage with a mass takeoff of almost 190 tons, provided with the Vulcan 2 engine, very, very powerful cryogenic engine. The upper stage is also a cryogenic upper stage, a uh, height 4.71 meters, and it's roughly the size of a small studio apartment. And on the very top, uh, we have the fairing, uh, 70 meters high, and the whole launcher is 50 meters high, like 20 story building. Really. And uh, at the top of uh, the fairing, inside the fairing, our two passengers are there tucked up underneath the nose of the vehicle, Intelsat 17.4 uh, Intelsat, built by Norel in the US. Um, and Hylas 1 for Atlantic Communications of London, built by Astrium and ISRO in uh, India. They're both sitting comfortably in first class with their seat belts on. <laughs> first class, Katie, as you say, everything is very carefully controlled inside the fairing. First of all, it's very clean. Humidity control, air conditioning to provide the space travel with the perfect temperature. And above all, the satellite are linked to control benches in the satellite preparation facilities where Talented engineers from uh, Loral, Israel, and Astrium monitor of status of the vehicle. And if we were to put our X-ray glasses on, this is what we would see under the fairing. Um, here we can see the configuration of the spacecraft. Hyder uh, is underneath, um, and Intelsat 17 on the top. Intelsat 17 built by Space System Loral, weighing 5,540 kilograms at takeoff. We reach 66 degree east orbital position provide service over Asia and Indian Ocean. And on the lower part, within the SILDA, we have ILAS-1 for the end customer of anti-communication based in London. Broadband services uh, through this uh, satellite weighting slightly more than 2.5 tons uh, at takeoff. Now, if we take a look at the top third of the launcher, we're zooming in here, you can see the cryotechnic arms, which are coming from the umbilical tower and clamping onto the upper stage of the vehicle. What they're doing is they're feeding cryotechnic propellant to the upper stage. That's liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen, and it's at extremely low temperatures. Yes, minus 250 Celsius for the liquid hydrogen. Slightly warmer for the oxygen, but still minus 210 Celsius. And actually, we fill the tanks of the upper stage until the very last possible moment. That's because the fluids are so cold that they evaporate. And what we could see there was the close up of those uh, arms clamping on. Yeah, and you see those arms, the yellow that you see on the screen right now, will disconnect just before launch. And uh, something to watch out for, something else, of course, to watch out for is that uh, there is a seven second delay between the ignition. Uh, of the engines and liftoff. What's that about? Exactly. Uh, we ignite the Vulcan engine first, then the onboard computers check for it for seven seconds uh, to make sure that it's working properly, and then we light the boosters. That's the point of no return, and the launcher takes off. Yeah, there's nothing we can do to hold it back at that point. We're approaching now the one minute mark. Uh, we're switching all systems now to flight mode. We're live at the Guyana Space Centre for the launch of an Ariane 5 ECA. We're orbiting two passengers today, Intelsat 17 and Hylas 1. Welcome if you're just joining us. Our best wishes goes to our customer tonight, Intelsat and Aventi, and to everybody who has worked so hard to bring us to today's launch. Best wishes, everybody. Let's sit back and watch. Who 
chose de DDO. Attention pour le décompte final. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, unité, top. Allumage Vulca. Allumage des EAP, décollage. And there she blows, hauling herself against the gravity of the Earth, nearly 800 tons, roughly the weight of two jumbo jets. After the initial well, six-second vertical climb, we rotated to the east, and we're now heading out over the Atlantic Ocean. And we can hear her flying over now in our commentary box. We're burning three engines, two on the boosters, one on the main stage. Of course, the boosters are doing all the work here. Their job is to get us away from the Earth, even though we ignited all three of those engines on the ground. We need an awful lot of firepower to push us against the gravity of the Earth. So those boosters are providing 90% of the thrust right now. That's roughly the equivalent of 12 jumbo jets. They're going to burn for a couple of minutes. Each booster burns two tons of propellant. So to give you a rough idea, if you were to fill your car with petrol weekly, you'd uh, be burning about one and a half years' worth of petrol in one second. Now, Thomas, um, before launch, all eyes were on the status panel's screen, and now we're actually looking at another screen. Um, we call it the trajectory. On the left-hand side, you can see a curve yep. on the top. Actually, on the left part of your screen, uh, for our viewers, there is a line which is the computed uh, trajectory of the launch vehicle, and there is a, a white dot moving on the curve that the actual position of the launch vehicle and this fixed perfectly the the to the prevision of the flight. And we can see here the separation of the boosters. Beautiful images. Those two dots falling back to Earth. They've burnt their fuel. We don't need them anymore, so they're falling back down to Earth. So we're losing weight, Thomas. Yes, we have lost about two-thirds of our weight in just two minutes of flight. And you know, the lighter we are, the faster we go, that's the basic rule in space science. Absolutely, and uh, we're looking here at the fairing, the top of the vehicle. It's uh, protecting the two satellites from the rigors of the launch. The satellites are inside oh, it. What kind of rigors are we talking about? Well, first of all, a liftoff. You know, there are acoustic vibrations, shock waves.